Hello and welcome to this episode of Black Talk Radio News. My name, of course, is Scotty Reed. Black Talk Radio News, of course, is part of the Black Talk Radio Network. And you can find us online and find our podcast on just about every major podcast outlet. So listen, on this episode, you know, here recently, especially what with what is going on in Florida, um, concerning Ron DeSantis trying to erase black history, I think it's important not just because of what he's doing, but we should always, especially those of African descent, specifically African Americans in the United States, we should be studying up on our own history and sharing that history, not just with other African Americans, but specifically them we should, but we should be sharing it with everybody and let everybody know that this country would not even exist very strongly possibly that this country wouldn't exist without the role of African Americans and so on this episode I want to focus on how the uh, United States wouldn't even exist today if not for the African Americans who participated in the American Civil War um, I wrote a essay about it, um, but I'm just sharing a little bit on this podcast about what I shared in writing um, with my audience um, on Black Talk Radio Network. But make no mistake, African-Americans played a crucial role in the Union's victory over the Confederacy during the American Civil War. And without their help, the United States of America likely would not exist in its present form. The descendants of European immigrants like Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis like to not only celebrate, um, you know, these neo-Confederates. And, and I'm, we're talking about these are people who descended from immigrants arriving after the American Civil War. Now, African-Americans did initially face discrimination and were not allowed to serve in the Union Army. But as that war progressed, <laughs> they needed them. They needed more troops, and it led to the acceptance of African-American soldiers. Um, now, these soldiers did not share the initial goal of President Lincoln at the time, who stated um, that his goal was not to free any slaves when he was elected. And let me correct myself. He, his intention when he was elected was not to free any human beings from bondage, any victims of slavery. His initial goal was just to keep the uh, union together. And I mean, this is well documented, his thoughts on that. Uh, it only became necessary because they were losing the war to allow African Americans to join the union army and to elicit support from, let's say, the victims of slavery behind enemy lines you had to, he had to issue the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed all victims of slavery in those states in rebellion. And that's important to note, just the states in, in rebellion. But of course, that would lead to the abolishment of that form of slavery. And if y'all <laughs> wondering, what does he mean about that form of slavery? Well, slavery comes in many different forms and the United States Constitution doesn't actually abolish slavery, but leaves it in place um, as an institution uh, for the courts and the prisons and what have you. But, you know, getting back to their role in the Civil War of uh, those proud African-American soldiers, it, again, it was never about keeping the Union together. That was Lincoln's goal. But if defeating the Confederate Army was the price um of giving these people freedom, then that's what he did. He was willing to pay that price. So these African-American Union soldiers were willing and able to put the Southern insurrectionists six, six feet under the ground. So these African-American soldiers were known then as the United States Colored Troops, and they served with distinction and valor, proving their bravery and dedication to the cause once it became about 
abolishing the enslave, enslavement of African descendant persons in the United States. Their contributions in battles like the Battle of Fort Wagner and the Battle of the Crater showcase their military prowess, which would be duplicated in all the wars and military conflicts the United States would entangle itself in over the next 150 years. Now, these soldiers, well, not just these soldiers, but African Americans played essential roles um, in the Civil War by providing crucial support as laborers, nurses, spies, and of course, as soldiers. But the enslaved victims, once Union soldiers came in contact with them, were able to provide intelligence, valuable intelligence to uh, help the war effort of the Union uh, Army. Um, so I think it is important to let people know, to make it known to whoever that our contributions, our ancestors contributions were so vital to the union's ultimate victory over the Confederacy and it's well documented, you know, they can do their research, but if not for them, it is quite possible we wouldn't even be in the United States of America today. Instead, we would be the Confederate States of America, or maybe both would exist, but with a reduced uh, footprint on the North American continent. Um, now, after the uh, American Civil War, because African Americans played such a crucial role in that and winning that war and defeating the Confederates, um, the KKK was then founded by ex-Confederate officers and soldiers who were hell bent on exacting their revenge upon vulnerable African-American populations, these former victims of slavery. Um, now, unfortunately, while the Confederacy was defeated, their white supremacist ideology was not. And it would greatly influence politics and institutional racism was practiced at all levels of government, whether we're talking about local municipalities, state legislatures and the governors. And, you know, other than what I've read, um, Ulysses S. Grant, a former U Union Army general who then became president, you know, he really did a uh, fight and stand up for African-American civil rights. And his administration actually destroyed the terrorist organization Ku Klux Klan, the Ku Klux Klan. But unfortunately, after, you know, Grant was out of office, the Ku Klux Klan was uh, reconstituted and even supported by presidents like President uh, Woodrow Wilson, who uh, screened that racist film, Birth of a Nation, right there in the White House. And so, you know, even though 64, we got civil rights, and certainly um, we are not suffering um, the abuses at the level of our ancestors, you know, the remnants of this white supremacy ideology still persists. And, you know, when you look at people like Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis, you know, they're trying to turn it into a growing movement. So, but make no mistake, you know, African Americans save the union. Without us, they'd have lost. They would have lost. And this is why I tell other African Americans that talk about going to Africa, you know, relocating to Africa and starting back to Africa movements. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not leaving because this place would not even exist. This country would not even exist without our efforts, um, during the American Revolutionary War and especially during the American Civil War. It wouldn't even exist, but we got these people like Ron DeSantis and Don Trump, Donald Trump, whose grandparents and great great grandparents weren't even here during the American Civil War, um, would come much later you know, decades later, but they would buy into, I, I suspect, you know, the racist ideology that many of the newly arrived immigrants were being adopted uh, into, especially in the South. Um, okay, so it, it's just quite, quite odd to me that, and I know why they're doing it, but they don't have any kind of family connections to the Confederacy, but 
them embracing the Confederacy is the Republican Southern strategy, which has uh, been implemented since the 1880s, but really was defined by the Nixon administration and subsequent Republican administrations. They always run that's those ca- those candidates are always running on a Southern strategy, which is to promote racism and white supremacy. Some codified, some not so codified. All right. So do your research on, on them. Um, most of the white people, I would say the majority of the white people in this country only arrived here, I would say recently. You know, again, slavery wasn't even that long ago, 150 years. That's what, two, three generations ago that we can trace that to. And so, you know, these people don't even have the history of being in this country that African Americans do. But yet, you know, um, we get down to people like Trump and Ron DeSantis, even though, you know, their ancestors were looked at as undesirable with, you know, DeSantis illiterate great great grandmother coming over here from Italy in 1917 was the same year. Um, that they passed um, anti-immigration legislation uh, targeting undesirables, which she would have been one as an illiterate, you know. Um, but yet, even though they talk about how their ancestors faced discrimination or whatnot, and and but they want to continue to practice discrimination against would-be non-white immigrants. You know, Trump even go going as far as to name European countries that he would prefer immigrants come from, you know, while, while putting in place such a thing, I think they call it the Muslim ban. But, you know, it's shameful that the individuals like these are using political power in the ignorance of their followers to erase the contributions, the trials and tribulations of a group of people whom without the nation would not even exist in its present form. You know, it's just troublesome that here we are in the 21st century and still have to combat racial hate and ignorance manifesting in government policies. It says a lot about our society to the majority non-white world that men like these have any support at all. So the centuries long journey and struggle of African descendant people, specifically African Americans against racist and racism in America will continue all right this has been scotty reed with the black talk radio news uh podcast um if you would like to support the work of the network um you can donate to the black talk media project you can go to blacktalkradionetwork.com and click on the link peace and blessings to all y'all have a good day and y'all be safe (laughs) 